One of the most important things for students to understand is why we have theories of international relations. And so that's the first thing we want to discuss today. We have a lot of theories of international relations in our field. John, why do we have so many theories? Well, Mike, that's a great question, and, and that's at, you know, a question that lurks behind the, the book itself. Why, why do we have so many theories? And I think there are two answers. One is we have many questions, and they're not all the same. We're, we're trying to explain a lot of different things. Uh, some of our questions have to do with questions of war and peace, others with the functioning of the world economy, uh, the nature of international institutions, historical rise and decline of states, of international order. So partly we have many theories because we have many things to explain and they're not necessarily all looking for the same type of, of theoretical explanation. But beyond that, the world of world politics is uh, in, in exceedingly complex and there are uh, more than a few things that you would want to, you want to see in the world. So you, you can think of international uh, relations theories as, as glasses, as, as, as Per, the spectacles that you put on, and each theory illuminates different parts of the world. It puts certain things in the background and certain things in the foreground. And uh, partly uh, from the first issue of what you want to explain, you will be uh, looking for different kinds of glasses. Some will look at gender, feminism, uh, looks at uh, a, a part of the world that if you're looking at causes of war or if you're looking at uh, at foreign policy of imperial states, you may not want to, to put on those glasses. You'll want to put on a different pair of glasses. Okay, so we have this idea that theories are in some ways theoretical perspectives, ways of viewing the world, ways of thinking about the world. Joe, does that, does that make sense to you? Is that the way you think about theory? Yes, largely it does. Uh, the image that I use uh, is that of, uh, we are all concerned with uh, a certain range of very important questions, I think, they can be traced back to some degree to a core problem, namely the causes of war and the conditions for peace. But as John points out, uh, even if one were to agree with that uh, idea that there is this, uh, at the end of the day, fundamental core problem, that quickly then breaks out into the various questions uh, that John has uh, correctly identified, which then may elicit different arguments and different uh, perspectives, different theoretical traditions. I would add, if I could, uh, we're also in the process, still I think in the process, and we lack in the field a, a consensus about what constitutes uh, a successful argument, a, a, an argument that withstands uh, close scrutiny, uh, uh, both logically and empirically, and uh, that would probably be necessary for the winnowing down of the different arguments, uh, the different perspectives, uh, perhaps the consolidation of elements of the different perspectives uh, into uh, a smaller number. Uh, we were talking earlier that at a minimum we can think uh, of four, five, or six different perspectives and uh, there are disagreements about what constitutes evidence, what constitutes a persuasive test, uh, and uh, I suspect that in the last 20 years there's developed less consensus about that than uh, more consensus, and so that's probably, uh, I think it is one of the reasons why we continue to have, and indeed have had a increased number, a, uh, uh, I think the, on, on net net we have more perspectives today than 30 years ago. And I think that reflects a, in the, uh, uh, that uh, we're, we're still arguing also about how to test theories and how perhaps to make choices about putting some one or another approach to the side. So I think it's fair from the perspective of a student to see this as a positive thing. I mean, political science in general and international relations in particular are unlikely to come up with some kind of unified field theory where one theory is what you use as the tool to explain many, many different types of international phenomena. And if I could uh, yeah. sort of just interject, there are risks to premature belief that is possible uh, to have that type of uh, convergence uh, on one theory. I think we've seen that in the discipline of economics 
where there was a sense that the uh, rational expectations argument, the kind of uh, economic theorizing that occurred in the 1980s and 90s was the only way that the perfectly operating markets uh, ended up getting uh, the world economy in trouble with the Great Recession, which we talk about in the book of 2008-2009. It were many good economists have said that there was uh, uh, too much of a rush to acceptance of that perspective. We don't want to do that in international right. relations. No, I think that's right. And I, I think also for students, you, know, you might have two reactions. The first would be, it's frustrating that there are so many theories and it's, it's sort of difficult to absorb and understand the various differences. But at the same time, it's very exciting because it means that there are a lot of perspectives in contention. And that's actually what makes our field so interesting, is that people come at it with radically different assumptions, radically different perspectives. In our book, we have features that require students to think about the world from different perspectives. And you do that in theory as well as you do it in politics. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the exciting thing about the study of international relations is that it is an ongoing debate. And the debate debates in the field tend to get organized around these different theories. And that has a, a kind of um, illuminating quality to it, exchanging views, comparing evidence, uh, pushing the other side to clarify their view and to be more precise about what precisely their argument is. So uh, the debate dynamic in international relations has a positive effect on, ultimately, at the end of the day, what we know and what we don't know. 